vamos lá. É, bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite a todos e a todas que estão mais acompanhando uma aula de história. A aula de hoje vai ser correção, terminar a correção do Em Casa, falta só um exercício e depois passar um documentário sobre o nazismo e o fatismo, certo? O é, que, que eu ia comentar com vocês? Depois eu passo, é que o meu chat, o meu chat, ele não, eu não consigo mandar mensagem para todo mundo, eu consigo mandar. Não quero reservar, deixa eu ver. Ah, todos, maravilha, ótimo. Depois eu coloco o link aqui, tudo bem? Para quem quiser terminar de ver. Ah, o exercício número 3, lá do Em Casa, não sei se vocês vão se recordar, lá na página 155, tem duas imagens, né? Tem uma charge e tem uma foto né, de duas crianças judias é, na frente, lá sendo meio que... Meio não, né? Sofrendo, meio, sofrendo bullying, né? Sofrendo... Um preconceito, na verdade, é mais do que bullying, né? Um racismo ali, né? Evidente na escola. E aí você tem a, a, a letra A. É, eu, eu não tô, eu tô sem a apostila aqui, mas pela resposta, por que que os nazistas estimularam o, anti, o, anti, o antissemitismo? É isso a, a pergunta? Alguém pode ler para mim? Eu tô sem a apostila aqui. Maravilha, ótimo. Muito bom ter a ajuda de vocês. Ótimo, maravilha. <risos> Eu leio. Beijo, então. Obrigado. Observe a charge e a fotografia e responda as questões a seguir em seu caderno. É só isso. Quer que eu leia a legenda? Não, a 3A. Não, não é não. Ah, tá. Achei. Por que o nazismo estimulou o antissemitismo? Repete, desculpa. Por que o nazismo estimulou o antissemitismo? Ah, é isso mesmo. Então, tá aí. Os nazis estimularam o antissemitismo para justificar o terror. Ao eleger o suposto culpado para todos os problemas, o governante totalitário desvia as atenções dos reais problemas do país e justificam seus terríveis métodos de violência. É fundamental achar um culpado para tudo, né? É, é, é clássico de, governo, de governos autoritários, né? É, achar um culpado para tudo e medidas rápidas, práticas, simples. Ah, é só fazer isso que resolve. Em vez de apresentar a complexidade do problema, o contexto em que a Alemanha estava vivendo, pós Primeira Guerra Mundial e pós crise de 29, né? é esse tipo de, 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 de ideologia, de ideia, que vai levar a Alemanha, que vai levar o mundo para uma Segunda Guerra Mundial e a Alemanha para um desastre completo. Ô Ju, vou, te, vou abusar de você, você perdoa. Você pode ler a, a, a B, por favor, para mim? Leio. Obrigado. Considerando que você estudou, estabeleça uma relação de causa e consequência entre a charge e a fotografia. Perfeito. Questão de causa e consequência aqui é que já que eu tenho uma charge que trata, o, o, uma, que trata mal o judeu e que divulga que o judeu é, é o culpado, é uma espécie de alguma coisa ruim, isso se reflete na realidade, né? É a propaganda, é, enfim, é o que nós temos hoje, tanto de propaganda quanto de tudo que vem aí de, de, no, nos WhatsApp aí da vida, né? A relação de causa e consequência é de que, graças à propaganda feita na charge, as pessoas começaram a reproduzir ideias no cotidiano das escolas, tá? E aí é uma coisa que, que a letra... Aí eu lembro da letra C, né? Pra, se você encontra... Algo, algum tipo de, de violência na, na escola, né? algo desse tipo, né? como se fosse um bullying, né? se eu não me engano, né? é, na letra C. E aí eu coloquei que é pessoal, né? mas existe, né? sempre, sempre existiu essa, essa zoeira, essa questão de sempre, sempre colocar em voga, em destaque o que é diferente, o que é o estranho, né? o que não é comum. E não à toa que a gente vê muitos... Eu, eu vi no, no final de semana um filme... É, putz, eu, ela, eu, ele e a menina que vai morrer, é, um, é bem isso mesmo o nome do filme. Tá? Deixa eu pegar aqui só para... Ah, cadê minha lista? Ah, maravilha, eu não coloquei na minha lista. Ótimo, preciso colocar que eu li. Mas que trata sobre isso, de um menino que ele quer ser invisível na escola. Tipo, meu, eu quero ser invisível. Né? Eu não quero aparecer porque ser de alguma tribo, ser de alguma coisa, meu, dá problema, as pessoas vão olhar, vão julgar. Eu, não quero, eu quero ser invisível. Né? Quantos não, não adotam essa, essa técnica? Né? Vou falar nada, vou ficar quieto, vou ficar na minha. Né? Usa, usa de blusa, usa de todo, todos os meios para ficar sempre com uma, uma, 
como sinal de um corpo fechado, né? Normal. Fala, não quero me relacionar, não quero saber, é isso, falou, tchau. Melhor. Né? Porque vai que né, o, meu, o meu destaque vai ser, sei lá, um destaque negativo e a galera vai zoar e eu não gosto. Enfim, né? esses problemas de convivência que existem na escola, no intervalo, então nem se fale. Né? Eu, você... Obrigado, Juliana. Obrigado. Eu, você e a, e a garota que vai morrer. É, esse... esse... Esse filme mesmo, a gente assistiu lá em casa, achei bem fofinho, bem legal, bem interessante, bem interessante. Mostrando um pouco o estereótipo da escola, né? É bacana, eu gosto desses filmes que tratam sobre, sobre escola, né? Enfim, sou professor, né? Mas eu gosto dessas problemáticas de entender os alunos, de ver os problemas que passam, que as coisas não são simples, é uma relação complicada, enfim. Eu acho muito interessante isso, acho fundamental a gente ter compreensão disso como professor. Enfim, dito isso, tá? Interrompo o compartilhamento. Vamos para o... Aqui. Deixa eu colocar o link no nosso, no nosso chat, no nosso bate-papo. Cadê, professor? E... Mas é muito parado. <risos> Fernando, beleza. Entendi. É... Pô, eu, eu, sou, é, eu sou muito... Tá aí o link tá, do documentário que eu mandei. Que eu mandei. É, ele é... Ele, 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 bem, enfim, eu, é que eu sou suspeito de falar do Parasita. Eu acho que... Eu, exato. Pra mim é maravilhoso o filme. Mas tudo bem. Eu acho que isso é, uma, isso é uma coisa. Quando a gente começa a ver filme, tudo bem se achar parado. Tudo bem se você não gostar. Você pode achar um filme bom, mas você fala, puta, mas é parado, a gente tentou ver, não conseguir. Acho que é uma questão de gosto, e é isso, as pessoas não... A gente não tem que colocar na goela, tipo, mano, é bom, você tem que gostar. Vai, goste, goste, goste! Não, é tudo... aí, é, aí é totalitarismo, aí é, é ditadura, calma. Né? As pessoas podem não gostar de Parasita, Coringa, enfim, é gosto, é gosto. Gente. É, e isso que é incrível da arte, né? Cada um, você tem uma, um filme, você fala, meu, como o filme é ruim, pro outro fala, meu, eu acho que eu achei bom, gostei. Enfim, é, é isso, é gosto. Bora lá, então? Vamos ao documentário que trata sobre o... os ditadores e ascensão do fascismo, tá? The darkest pages of history were undoubtedly written between the world wars after the absurd butchery of 1914-1918 and using the fear inspired by the Bolshevik Revolution, some leaders instituted a new authoritative political and social order, dictatorship. <laughs> The phenomenon occurs and develops in two countries, Italy and Germany. First Mussolini, then Hitler, flatter their countrymen's basest impulses, manipulate crowds, preach violence, favor brute strength over human rights, and seize power whilst dreaming of world conquest. By the time the Western powers realized the danger of moving over Europe, due to their weakness, indecisiveness, mistakes, and cowardice, it will be too late to avoid the maelstrom, in which civilization will come close to disappearing. Alguém fez um risco na tela? Pode tirar, por favor? <risos> Alguém? Tá vendo que tem um risco vermelho aí? Vocês estão me ouvindo? Não, estamos ouvindo. Ah, tá. Obrigado. Sim. Ok. Valeu. <risos> Eight and a half million men die in the war, and in 1919, Europe is in ruins. 
Aí a guerra é a Primeira Guerra Mundial. The Versailles Treaty compromises future peace and resolves no problems. It merely widens the breach between the victors and the vanquished. The Germans claim they've been stabbed in the back, and the Italians describe a mutilated victory. And the Italians are the first to resort to weapons. Through speeches, more than by his writing, the poet Gabriele D'Annunzio understands how to exploit his countrymen's nationalistic feelings. Leading his shock troops, the Arditi, he takes Fiume, a town placed under the control of the Allies. He establishes an authoritarian corporate state which will inspire the leader of fascism. This is the movement's future leader, Benito Mussolini, a former socialist militant. He creates the Fasci in 1919, which are fighting units. Fascism is less a doctrine than a concerted violent action in view of seizing power. And power is there for the taking after a series of successive strikes. Italy is virtually headless. The advent of communism is either expected or feared by the population. Violence breaks out in the streets in Milan and Turin in the Fiat factories. <laughs> the fascists break the strikes, upheld by industrialists and landowners. Neither the army nor the government react. Mussolini uses the circumstances intelligently. He erases the revolutionary aspects of his program and sends his black shirts off against anything vaguely resembling the left. The fascists win 35 seats in the 1921 elections, whereas the socialists, who have just broken off with the communists, are losing seats. That year, Mussolini transforms his fasci into the National Fascist Party. It will number 700,000 members by 1922. <laughs> In October, Balbo convinces him to send his black shirts against the capital. The march on Rome looks more like a parade than an attack and could easily have been turned back by the army had only Victor Emmanuel III decided to sign the decree proclaiming a state of siege. The march on Rome becomes fascist legend and on October 30th, the king receives Mussolini and asks him to form a new government. Mussolini, now president of the council, begins by respecting parliamentary rules as he creates the fascist militia in 1923. Then the fascist high council, the supreme state organism. More important, he implements a new law which automatically guarantees him a large majority in both the Senate and the House, over 65%. But in 1924, Matteotti, a socialist deputy who has made a violent speech against fascist manipulations and lawbreaking, is assassinated. There's a tremendous scandal, and Mussolini almost loses his grip. Once again, he is saved by the king, who uses the occasion to reinforce his own power. By the end of 1925, the president of the council becomes Il Duce. He may now promulgate laws and decrees without even consulting his ministers. <laughs> Parties are suppressed. A secret police is created. Violence becomes systematic. Freedom of the press is abolished. <laughs> Dictatorship is taking over. In Germany, fascism is also born right after the war, mainly because of the humiliation of defeat. It begins with the idea that Germany could only have lost because she was undermined by an internal revolution. 
A socialist republic is formed after Wilhelm's abdication. But Karl Liebknecht, who wanted to import Marxism to Germany, and Rosa Luxemburg, who is a revolutionary, the Spartacus leaders, are assassinated during a week of violent fighting. <laughs> The Weimar Republic is saved by an alliance with the army. Right from the beginning, the regime is condemned because it accepts the clauses of the Versailles Treaty, which German public opinion considers an outrage. Germany is on the brink of chaos. At this point, an unknown man is going to appear. His name is Adolf Hitler, and his troubled life resembles his turbulent times. He was born in Austria, near the German border, and he fails his art studies in Vienna, which at the time is a glowing example of culture and intelligence. He then begins to hate the Jews, of which there are many in Vienna. He's an antisocial vagrant, and in 1914, he's fascinated by his discovery of war and violence. He will live with both for over 30 years. He joins a tiny group in 1919 and renames it the German Workers' National Socialist Party. He imposes the swastika. He asked Röhm to organize a militia, the SA. Meanwhile, the situation is explosive in the demilitarized rural region east of the Rhine. There are riots. In order to reestablish peace and in retaliation for non-payment of war debts outlined by the Versailles Treaty, the French occupy the area and answer the bomb attacks and passive resistance by deporting 150,000 persons, which incurs the wrath of the whole country. <laughs> Nineteen twenty three is a tragic year for Germany. The depression is especially hard on the workers. Stockholders and retired persons are ruined. Inflation allows industrialists to carve out new empires. <laughs> The mark is spiraling down. At the beginning of the year, one dollar is worth 18,000 marks. By November, it is worth 8 million marks. Bad feelings increase. Rioting by the jobless multiply. The communists use the situation to amplify the violence of the demonstrations in an attempt to impose a workers' republic. The extreme right also uses the situation. Hitler provokes a revolt in a Munich beer cellar in November 1923. He is contained, arrested, and condemned to five years in prison. This is where he will write Mein Kampf, whose main premise is a single tragic idea. The world is a jungle where the strongest survive. The white races, especially the Aryans, are superior to all others, especially the Jews, who are a corruption of humanity and must be eliminated. The Germans are destined to rule the world. This means war, first against the French, who are responsible for the defeat. All Hitler's thoughts are resumed in Mein Kampf. But when the book is published in 1925, no one will take it seriously. No one. In Italy, Mussolini consolidates fascist institutions. The idea is simple, control the population in every phase of its life to teach it proper conduct. <laughs> Baby Italians are immediately included in an organization. By the age of four, he is a son of the wolf, a tribute to Roman history. Then the child becomes a member of a Balidas, where he receives pre-military training. The motto is believe, obey, fight and everyone has to wear the fascist uniform. The teenager is inducted into the avant-gardists and then joins the party. The Ducci's idea is simple. I take the man in the crib and I let go of him when he dies, thus turning him over to the Pope. To prevent class conflict, a new social organization is created with a cooperative system that is a mixture of syndicalism and totalitarianism, grouping the workers, the bosses, state representatives, as well as fascist officials. Tremendous projects are created. Mussolini claims they will reduce unemployment. 
una delle più grandi opere del primo decennio del regime fascista. Hundred and twenty thousand acres in the Pontine swamps are dried up, decreasing malaria. The wheat battle lasts six years and is supposed to give Italy cereal autonomy and enhance rural virtues. The Duce himself lends a hand, sometimes in shirt sleeves, sometimes without. <laughs> The first autostrade or large highways appear in Italy. New cities are founded. This is when the so-called Mussolini style appears. It is voluntarily heavy and monumental and has left traces throughout Italy. A great urban plan transforms Rome. A university city is built as well as cheap apartments. Trajan's Forum is excavated and large avenues are inaugurated. <laughs> All this is intended to resuscitate the Roman Empire. Mussolini pontifically announces the birth of the Third Rome, after that of the Caesars and that of the Popes. Any means are used to entrench the idea of dictatorship in a historical context. <laughs> Territorial expansion is a major fascist theme. In speeches, the Mediterranean becomes an Italian lake. The Adriatic, Mare Nostrum, R.C. Mussolini always appears in uniform and claims that war is to man what motherhood is to woman, and that the 20th century will be the century during which Italy will lead humanity. Meanwhile, propaganda is going full speed ahead. An infallible leader, the Duce has a real cult following. One tame philosopher claims he is an instrument of providence sent to create a new civilization. The regime's motto is, Mussolini is always right. In fact, he even starts believing in it himself. His judgment becomes clouded by megalomania. Nobody dares to contradict him. He will only be governed by what he calls his animal instinct. His speeches are both demagogical and contradictory. In a single breath, he declares that the fascists are aristocrats and democrats, radical and reactionary, conservative and progressive, legalists and illegalists. <laughs> You are my bodyguards and the ramparts of the regime, he says to those listening to it. <laughs> he's not only an orator, he's an actor, and he's a ham actor at that. He gestures, makes faces, mimics, poses, anything that works. Fascinating. The people idolize him. Mothers ask him to bless their child, and peasants kneel as he passes by. All he needs now is religious endorsement. <laughs> He has renounced his early anti-clericalism to prone all family virtues and has won the Vatican's support. In 1929, within the scope of the Latran Agreement, the Pope concedes that he only rules the city of the Vatican and relieves 4 billion lira. Divorce is abolished 
schools dole out religious instruction. More important, the people and international opinion conclude that fascism has the Pope's blessing. In Germany, French troops evacuate the rule, conforming with the international agreements. Is this the beginning of European stability and reconciliation? Not really. The occupation and evacuation of the Ruhr's only result is to awaken nationalistic German feelings. Six months after his sentencing for the Munich outburst, Hitler is pardoned, but he has learned his lesson. He will now gain power through legal means. He enhances the power of the SA and strengthens his power with parades, demonstrations, fights and arguments during political rallies. He opts for any violent symbol, such as this pagan flag ceremony. Once again, events will help Hitler. The Wall Street crash in 29 triggers a worldwide crisis that submerges Germany. The Americans withdraw their capital, and the loss of exports drives Germany to despair. One third of the population is touched. There are bank runs, and factories are closed. Two million unemployed in 1929, six million during the winter of 1931-32. The crisis demands enrollment in the SA or the Communist Brigades. Once again, the situation profits the extreme right or the extreme left. Convinced they must stop communism at any cost, the industrialists support Hitler, who will use any means and every complaint, and who bases his propaganda on refusing the war debt, revising the Versailles Treaty, xenophobia, and anti-Semitism. Leftist demonstrations are also an easy target. Result? In 1930, during the legislative elections, Nazi seats rise from 12 to 107. In 1932, having taken German citizenship, Hitler faces Hindenburg for the president's office. His campaign style is new at this time. He crisscrosses Germany, making three or four speeches a day before large, mesmerized crowds. He gets 13 and a half million votes, 37% of the total. <laughs> Old Marshal Hindenburg gets 19 million and won't even hear of Hitler as chancellor. He appoints von Papen, who forms a baron's cabinet without a Reichstag majority, and who tries to come to terms with Hitler, who in turn refuses to listen. He wants all the power for himself alone. <laughs> The Nazis win 230 seats in the July elections and become the first German party. Hindenburg still won't appoint Hitler. The Reichstag is dissolved once more, and during the following elections, the Nazis suffer a slight setback. General von Slesser, the new chancellor, tries to eliminate the Nazi movement with the army's help. He is forced to resign. Aging and unsure of himself, Hindenburg finally designates Hitler Chancellor January 30th, 1933. In keeping with tradition, he makes Hitler swear allegiance to the Weimar Constitution. Actually, the Republic is dying. <laughs> that evening, a triumphant torch-bearing parade marches beneath the chancellery windows, chanting, Today Germany is ours, tomorrow the world. Hitler is already publicly celebrating the German racial revolution, but no one in government seems to take him seriously. 
Neither von Papen, who has been named vice chancellor, nor a slight gray haired man that Hitler shuns but needs because he controls practically all means of communication. Alfred Hungenberg directs almost all the newspapers, an advertising agency, and UFA, the largest German film studios. He has only two Nazi ministers, one of them being Goering, who is commissioner of the interior for Prussia. February 27, 1933, the Reichstag is burned to the ground. The timing is perfect for Hitler, who demands that Hindenburg sign a decree suppressing fundamental freedoms the very next day. The Nazis win 93 seats in the March 5th legislative elections, but still don't have a majority. The Social Democrats and the Catholics still retain 48%. However, elderly President von Hindenburg is under no illusions. He knows that nothing will now stop Hitler who gains full powers from the Reichstag. Now, Goering can proclaim Germany's new rights before Parliament. <laughs> Parliament stands firmly behind the party concerning the equality of the rights of the German people, which is a decisive question for the life of the German nation. Stunning as it may seem today, the Germans find Hitler reassuring. He seems to be a true patriot who will sweep away the powerless Weimar regime and restore Germany to her former greatness. A brown plague settles. All powerful for four years, Hitler dissolves the Communist Party then the unions, and declares that the Nazi party is the only party. The SS enforce his decisions and occupy the country. Dictatorship is in store. In public, the chancellor is surrounded only by army and party uniforms. The Reich Ministry for Propaganda and the People's Education is given to Goebbels, a small man with a club foot who is a genius at manipulating the masses and who will lend a fanatical religious dimension to the regime. The first step is controlling the intellectuals, beginning with artists, writers, and poets. <laughs> The university is purged. In all major cities, books written by Marxist, pacifist, or especially Jewish authors are burned. Hein's famous poem, Lorelei, will bear the footnote, author unknown, in school books. Anti-Semitism is evident. Torture and sadism become official. The first real persecutions appear in 1933. After the first savage acts following the party's victory, there's a national boycott against Jewish professors, students, lawyers, and store owners. Hitler's thoughts in Mein Kampf will now be systematically applied. Esse modelo de perseguição que Hitler vai declarar, né, a, a todos os seus oponentes políticos mas né, ficou muito famoso a questão dos, dos judeus, será trabalhado na, no próximo módulo, quando eu falar com vocês sobre a Primeira Guerra Mundial. Desculpa, a Segunda Guerra Mundial. Beleza? Eu coloquei o link aí no chat. Quem quiser terminar de ver, termine. É, é bem bacana, eu, eu gosto muito desse... Ô, professor, que minuto que acabou só pra mim saber que eu não consegui ver? Oi? Que minuto que acabou que eu não consegui ver, por favor? 27. 
minuto 20. Obrigado. Beleza? É isso, turma. Valeu. Até quinta ou sexta. Não sei. Tá? E aí a gente começa a Segunda Guerra Mundial. Tá bom? Então é isso. Tchau, tchau, viu? Valeu. Valeu, professor. Tchau. Tchau, tchau, tchau.